camping out? <laughs> oh, I didn't want the light to disturb you. I decided I had to do some work on Jetman. Four days now, I've been trying to find a way for Jetman to solve his problem. It's driving me crazy. Relax, have some warm milk. I had some warm milk. I had some cold milk. I had hot coffee, iced coffee, orange juice, tomato juice, iced tea, hot tea. How long have you been up? About ten minutes. <laughs> See this? Dr. Destructo has connected five electro bombs to five big clocks in Central City. And Jetman has only ten minutes to find the bombs before they go off at midnight. So what's the problem? Five bombs in ten minutes? What's the record? Sweetheart. Sweetheart, look, you don't understand. The clocks are 50 miles apart, and Jetman doesn't know where the clocks are. And Dr. Destructo has just poured cement in Jetman's rocket boots. <laughs> You'll take a something. No, I won't. No, I won't. Oh, it happened. It's finally happened. It happens to everybody in this business. It was inevitable. I've lost my touch. Now if you can only lose your voice. <laughs> You've lost enough McLaughlin, Dick. Gee, I'm sorry, but he is a milkman. He gets up early anyway. Sorry, McLaughlin. I'll shut the window. And your mouth. <laughs> You know, what worries me is that I'm through as a cartoonist. I don't know what else I can do. I mean, ever since I was 14, I concentrated on drawing. What did I do, th what did I do before that that I was good at? I mean, that I was interested in? Can't make a living out of loving your mother. <laughs> Wait a minute, can that he was only dreaming about the bombs in the clocks, yeah? Paula. 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 Yeah, yeah. Is it necessary to tell everyone I'm having a problem with Jetman? Who's everyone? Well, like the window washer, for instance. Oh, Gilbert. Well, he was washing my kitchen window, and we got to talking. Well, I wish you wouldn't tell everyone I'm having a problem in the interest of lively conversation. All right, who else did you tell? Just him. Oh, and Bart. Bart? Oh, you don't know him. He's a process server. He came in this morning, and I gave him a little coffee. You know, there's a lot goes on in this house between the time you get up and the time I get up. Process server? Oh, gee, I'm glad you reminded me. He gave me this to give you. What is that? A subpoena. A subpoena? Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? I've been trying to avoid being served that thing all week. I won't take it. It's not legal unless he hands that thing to me directly. Take it away from me. I don't want to see that. Marty, and you were asleep. Oh, you must be mad. Look. Dick, I gave you my word that I would get this to you. Now, do you want me to go back to my word? What's it all about, anyway? I noticed Jerry Surgeon's name on it. It's an old plagiarism suit I thought was going to be dropped. He insists I stole the idea of Jetman from him. Well, why didn't you tell me about it? Well, I didn't want to worry you. I'm going to call Matt. Dick, he doesn't stand a chance. Now, I know that you had the idea for Jetman long before he had the idea for Rocket Person. Captain Rocket. How do you know that for sure? Because I was dating both of you at the time. Really? You're under arrest for double dating. <laughs> I get it. Jetman lifts up a 200 foot tidal wave just in the nick of time. The bombs get all wet and they don't go off. <laughs> well, don't you see? Everybody's saved. What saves everyone from the tidal wave? <laughs> I'll be back. She had coffee with me and Bart. How's this? How's this? Dr. Destructo got those nuclear bombs from Japan, see, and they're defective. <laughs> Who told you about it? Gilbert, he does our windows, too. <laughs> But what do you think of the idea? Dick? Well, Harry, I don't think my readers in Japan would appreciate it so much. How about Poland? <laughs> 
Yeah. Harry, Harry, you remember that time you had that little fire in the firehouse? You mean, the, you mean the time Fat Eddie was smoking in bed? <laughs> That's right. Well, I didn't go over there and try and put out the fire, did I? I left the putting out of the fire to you. You leave Dr. Destructo and the bombs to me, okay? If you'd call us when you smell the smoke, we could have saved the bed. Mm. Even if we did get to court, Jerry couldn't possibly win, could he? What are you talking about now, the lawsuit? Oh, you told Harry and you didn't tell me. Well, well, I told you, I just didn't want to worry you. That's if you hadn't told me, I've been worried sick. <laughs> You know, the injustice of the whole thing is that Jerry's accusation will make a lot of people wonder if there isn't something to it, whether he wins or not. Would you like a cup of coffee? <laughs> yeah, please. Ah, I get it. Hi, Dick. Oh, how are you, Matt? Matt, you know Harry Zaricardo? Harry, Paul. Well, did you see Sergeant's lawyers last night? Yes, yes, but they won't drop it. They think they have a case against us. I need a little time, so whatever you do, don't get served. <laughs> I've already been served. Harry, some more coffee. You two used to know Jerry Sargent. Isn't there some way you can work this out on a personal basis? Hey, I really do know <laughs> Harry. <laughs> Harry, <laughs> Harry <laughs> uh, 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 no, no, nothing doing. Thank you very much. This is my problem. I'll solve it myself. Goodbye, honey. Uh, oh, Dick, you forgot your subpoena. Thank you. <laughs> You ought to use her sometime, Matt. She's very good. I know that I could talk to Jerry and get him to drop that suit. Nope. No, I can't do it. This is Dick's problem. Of course. He's got to solve it himself. Of course. But you're going to go see Jerry anyway. Of course. Well, it's finished. Wicked Woman has been captured by Captain Rocket, and all the world's most fabulous pennies have been returned to the Louvre and Sears. <laughs> And that means I'm out of work. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Where'd that go wrong? I thought of an ingenious device. Daylight savings gave Captain Rocket an extra hour. Very clever, Mr. Sergeant. Mm -hmm. I think I better hang this up to dry now. Then I'll go change. Okay. Oh. Hi, Jerry. Paula, how nice to see you. How are you? Good day. Oh. Gee, did I do that? No, no, I did that. You did this. <laughs> Hold on this minute, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Jerry, you've changed Rocket Person's uniform. Captain Rocket. Oh, that's Wicked Woman. <laughs> I thought those were Rockets. <laughs> about something very important. The lawsuit. Right. There's no plagiarism involved, Jerry. Dick no more saw your idea for a rocket person than you saw his for Jet Man. Captain Rocket. Paula, pushing this plagiarism suit isn't my idea. It's the attorneys who work for the syndicate. Well, good. Then you can convince them that this was all a coincidence. Jerry, after all, isn't there enough crime in the whole world for both Jet Man and Captain Rocket? Rocket person. Right. <laughs> Jerry, you can convince the lawyers. You can talk to them. I'll bet you never can guess what happened. Jerry dropped the lawsuit. <laughs> now you'll never know. <laughs> Gee, I'm thrilled. I really am. I don't understand what made him do it. Well, when did you find out? Norman Nugent told me. I spent an hour in his office. For one minute, he told me how happy he was that the plagiarism suit was being dropped. And then he spent 59 minutes asking me why I haven't come up with an ending for the strip. What? Yeah, he wants to get a, another cartoonist in to help me meet my deadline. You don't need anyone to help you. Thank you. What are these? They're Jetman solutions from people in the building. They all want to help you. First I don't need help, and then I do. This is ridiculous. This is my problem. I'll solve it myself. Right, you really will. Anything good in these? <laughs> well, look, look, I spent the last three hours in the office trying to lick it. This is something I just have to face and accept. I'm finished. I'm through. I'm dead, dead, dead. Then how come I can still hear you? <laughs> if you don't like it, McLaughlin, why don't you move? I have! <laughs> hey, Dick, you want to hear some of these? Listen to this. Jet Man forces Dr. Destructo to confess where the bombs are hidden. Mm. Eh, nothing, nothing, right? Hey, this is not bad. There's a power 
shortage and all the clocks in the city stop running. No, no, that's no good. Not all the clocks are electric. Oh. Hey, you know, that gives me an idea. You know, what if it was the day that daylight savings time turned back to standard time? Wouldn't that give Jetman an extra hour? Hey, that's good. Yeah? Oh, 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 oh. that's good. <laughs> That's very good. Paula, that's perfect. Bless you. You did it. You did it. They can still make the deadline. I can do the drawings tonight. They can ship them out in half an hour and do the match right away. Sweetheart, sweetheart, what a day, what a day. No plagiarism suit to worry about and solve the jet man problem. Dickie, how do I ever think of daylight savings time? Well, oh, I don't know, but who cares? The important thing is that you did it. And I love you. I'm alive. I'm alive again. You are? <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, today, trouble on the home front? No, Jerry, it's this memory. I never remember what I remember. You know, I came to your office yesterday and saw your drawings. Mm -hmm. Well, I got home and then I remembered that I had forgotten everything about daylight savings time until I remembered. And that's when I called you an hour ago. Do you follow me? Of course not. <laughs> Jerry, unconsciously your drawings stuck in my mind. Butter. Well, um, skull or something. Hollister, please. Table for two. I'll put the menu up with the menu. <laughs> now, who just came in? Don't tell me. It's Dick. You look... No, actually, I guessed. I knew it had to be either him or Rutherford B. Hayes, and I remembered that Hayes died, and since then he doesn't come around as often. <laughs> If you saw his hair, you'd see me down the way. Uh, uh, excuse me, lady, for interrupting, but Hello. would you care to order yet? Yes, I would like to know if you have a telephone in the men's room. <laughs> men's room? Right. Yes. Would, would you bring me the number of that phone, please? Well, if, if you will tell me who you want, I'll be very glad no, to go. No, 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 I, I just want the number of that phone. And would you bring a telephone to this table, too, please? <laughs> oh, don't you think you're carrying this thing a little bit too far? Jerry, I've got to get us out of here before Dick sees us. Now, I'll explain everything later. Lady! <laughs> And, and lady, uh, this this is the number to the men's room. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Paula, would you like to explain what this is all about? Who can that be? I'll get it. <laughs> Hello? May I speak to Mr. Richard Hollister, please? Hello. Mr. Hollister? Mr. Richard Hollister? Where? Oh, uh, Mr. Hollister, there's a telephone call for you, sir. Oh, fine. Will you bring me a telephone, please? I can do that, sir. It's attached to the wall in the men's restroom. <laughs> this way, please. <laughs> Hey, 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 Jerry, what are we waiting for? What kind of a tippy leaper thing like this? Oh, yeah. Come on. Paula? Paula? Do you believe that marriage is based on faith and trust? I certainly do. Then prove it. How? By not asking me any questions. I'd just like to ask you one question. That's the one I didn't want to hear. Oh, I'm entitled to ask you one question. All right, but just one. Did you buy that fur coat? No. Where did you get it? That's two questions. No, no. Question one was a two-part question. <laughs> what was all that talk about faith and trust? How can I have faith and trust if I don't know what you've been up to? <laughs> okay. But I don't think you're going to believe the story that I've got to tell. That, I believe. I saw Jerry Sargent today. I'm upset, but I'm not destroyed. What would you say if I told you that I saw him yesterday? Now I'm destroyed. <laughs> Paula, you saw him yesterday and today? Dick, I saw Jerry because of the lawsuit. I specifically told you not to. Dick, I just 
couldn't stand by and see you get your name dragged through the mud without doing anything. So I went to Jerry and he dropped the suit. Don't tell me about the suit. Tell me about that coat. <laughs> okay. You want to sit down? Well, to begin with, I had lunch today with Jerry at the Pen and Quill. No kidding. That's where I had lunch. Right. If you hadn't, we wouldn't be in all of this now. But rather than have you get all jealous the way you do when you saw us, I thought it would be best if we just snuck out. But we couldn't, because you had to pick a table between us and the door. You must forgive me for that. <laughs> well, I had to have you page. To the men's room. Right. Now, okay, Paula, I'm going to tell you something. That... Faith and trust. Jerry and I left the pen and quill. And there was this organ grinder and his monkey. <laughs> Jerry would not give the monkey a dime because he said the monkey would go out and buy wine with it. <laughs> now this monkey got mad and ran away with my shoes. And the cow jumped over the moon. <laughs> Do you want me to go on with the story? You can't stop now. <laughs> well, as you know, it rained. How would I know? I was still inside the men's room. <laughs> well, believe me, it rained. Anyway, I could not cross the street with it raining with one shoe, so Jerry picked me up, but he slipped. And we fell in a mud puddle, so my dress was ruined. Luckily, Jerry's apartment was just around the corner. <laughs> and so, instead of coming home with a ruined dress, I went to his place, and he gave me his fur coat. Why didn't he give you a pair of his high heels, too? He won this on a quiz show. <laughs> you expect me to believe that? Why not? He also won a hair dryer. <laughs> that I believe. About the monkey, about the shoe, about falling in the mud puddle, that's a little tough to swallow, isn't it, Paula? You don't believe me. Well, let's just say I have a few minor reservations. All that grand talk about marriages being based on faith and trust. You don't believe me. I could have made up something, you know. But I told the truth until I got in trouble. I was a dummy. That's the whole thing. A dumb, I could have made up something dumb, dumb, dumb. <laughs> Uh, Harry, uh, the other night, Paul and I went to see a movie. Really? Well, that's fascinating, Dick. I'm glad you called me on. Oh, no. no, wait a minute. No, I, uh, uh, we'd like to get your opinion on it, Harry. You see, Paula sees the picture one way, and I see it another. Come over here and sit down, Harry. You see, you see, it's a love story. Oh, I like those. <laughs> In this picture, Audrey Hepburn is married to Rex Harrison. Now... Audrey goes to have lunch with Sesu Hayakawa. <laughs> but Rex is having lunch in the same restaurant. Now, she wants to get out of there, so she has Rex page to the men's room. Oh, I love it. I love it, Dick. <laughs> now, once outside the restaurant, a monkey steals Audrey Hepburn's shoe. Now, Dick. Dick. It's a monkey? Yeah, yeah, a, a monkey. What's now, the same color, Dick? <laughs> Uh, yeah, part of it was in color. <laughs> now, Sesu carries her across the street and slips and falls. Now, she falls into a mud puddle and her dress is ruined. Now, they go to his apartment and Sesu gives her a fur coat he won on a quiz show. <laughs> now, uh, Dick, uh, Dick, who wrote this? <laughs> I don't know, it's based on a classic. <laughs> A, a, cl a quiz show on a class. Right, right. <laughs> now, the point is, at the end of the picture, Audrey Hepburn tells Rex Harrison what happened. And he believes her. I mean, kind of. Only he doesn't believe her enough, so she gets mad. Now, see, I mean, I'm sort of with Rex. You know, I, I believe her. What do you think, Harry? Who do you believe? Audrey Hepburn or Rex Harrison? I believe Paula. <laughs> I mean, look, a thing like this could only happen to Paula, right? Thanks, Harry. Anytime, Rex.
I believe you. Guess my male ego was bruised when you went to bat for me with Jerry. I should be thanking you. Thank you. Well, I guess I can tell you now why I had to go see Jerry again. No, no, you don't have to. No, I want to. Being as you are so understanding about everything I said, you are entitled to hear the bad part. <laughs> the, the bad part? Hey, I was beginning to worry. Yeah, honey, I'm sorry I'm late. I stopped by Jerry's studio on the way home, gave him a little gift. Yeah? While I was there, I thought I'd better help him come up with an ending for his strip. Well, how did you do? Oh, great. I gave him some suggestions he liked very much. Yeah, tell me. A tidal wave floods the city, see? And Captain Rocket puts everybody aboard an ark. <laughs> you better give Mrs. O'Connor a little gift. You're right. I got something for you. what it is. No, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Wait a minute. I don't want to spoil a surprise. Let's see. Uh, you better tell me. What is it? That's your shoe. I had it bronzed. Where did you find it? Well, I had to get it back from the monkey. I traded him a bottle of wine for it. One hour from now, the Virginian poses as an outlaw to trap a murderer. Johnny Lancer protects a widow and her son from a hired gun. And on Wanted Dead or Alive, Josh Randall goes after a Mexican mercenary. It's the best of the West on USA's Sunday Showdown. Now, stay tuned as a contract with a killer leaves no room for escape on the original Alfred Hitchcock Hour, next on USA.